What is going on, Cultivate family? I hope you are all doing well, wherever it is that you're listening to this from today. I am back from Thailand. I have had a little bit of a shock to the system trying to get back into my usual routine. My brain didn't like it at all, which may be partly due to jet lag, but I kind of got up on the first day back at my desk and felt super anxious and overwhelmed. So I've been taking a lot of breaks and working a longer day, but making sure I have plenty of time to regroup in between work blocks. And it's been really, really helpful. The topic of today's episode has been on my mind so much the last few weeks. Today's episode is all about patience, which is something that I have never, ever had a lot of naturally. And some of you may be able to relate to that. Specifically, I'm referring to having patience when it comes to our own self-development, working on our physical and mental health, our fitness journeys and our food relationship journey as well. What is also really apparent, as queer and trans people, we tend to have to practice a lot of patience, I think, and it isn't always easy. And then you may throw neurodiversity into the mix and it gets even harder. Those of us on gender identity waiting lists or ADHD waiting lists, we know a lot about patience. And when we're having to be so patient with huge things like waiting for a gender dysphoria diagnosis or a first appointment to talk about top surgery or an ADHD diagnosis, it can feel really hard in other aspects of our life when we're having to exercise so much patience for things that are so important to us. So today's podcast is for anyone that struggles with patience when it comes to their health and fitness and well-being journey. Anyone who feels like I just wish I could get there now and sometimes feel frustrated that the thing that they're working towards from a mental well-being or a physical well-being or a food relationship point of view is just taking forever. I think specifically the stuff that I've been thinking about with my own journey with patience As someone that's been through eating disorder recovery, lots of mental health treatment, therapy, my transition, my treatment for endometriosis, not to mention like my fitness journey, my food relationship journey and coming back from injury, patience is a mega skill. And I only think now at the age of 33, just 33, as of last month, I am actually starting to figure it out. So let's get into it. Why do we actually have to be patient when it comes to our own self-work? I think with this, a lot of the most important things that we might work on for ourselves, like our well-being, it takes time and it isn't easy. And with any sort of journey, whether it's a fitness journey, whether it's eating disorder recovery, whether it's a transition, we're going to naturally have a lot of setbacks and roadblocks. And it can be quite hard and testing to accept that those roadblocks and setbacks and those challenges are all part of the process and the journey. Our journey towards the thing that we want or growing into the person that we want to be, it won't always be linear. It won't always work out that way. And the other thing, in the world that we live in now, our lives are constantly being interrupted with different challenges and obstacles whether that's at work, uh, personally, financially, societally. It's why there's never a perfect time to start a fitness journey or to start therapy or to start your transition. We're better off just diving into something when we're ready to take action. And that's kind of why I always encourage people to sign up to Fuzz Culture Club or Superhuman as and when they feel fired up and motivated to do it even if they're a little bit busy with work or they're moving house or they've got stuff on. It's definitely better to capitalise on the drive to want to take action, which in a sense is almost the one thing that we don't actually have to be patient for. We can take action towards a goal any time. That's within our control. The patience part comes into play as we continue to show up every day and chip away at it every day when it starts to get really hard. And if we don't give ourselves the patience we deserve, we're not giving ourselves the time or the space to actually grow into the humans that we want to be. And I think also 
if it was really easy for us to make huge life changes quickly, everyone would be able to do it all the time. The reason that we struggle with this is because it is not easy. And the reason that we see a lot of people give up on self-work, or fitness goals or career goals is because when it gets hard, we can become frustrated and impatient and a bit fed up and resentful. And again, these are all feelings that are kind of part of that process and learning how to sit with those feelings and acknowledge them is really hard and that in itself takes time. So I want to talk about specifically patience when it comes to working out to our training or to doing a sport. The first day we walk into a gym, day one, we are not experienced at all in lifting weights. But if we show up once a week or twice a week or even three times for six weeks, that can make a huge difference to someone that is a complete newbie at lifting weights. You can make a huge amount of strength progress in a short amount of time when you're new to weightlifting. Or maybe you haven't trained with much intensity or purpose before. So having progressive programming, you make gains really, really fast. The patience part when it comes to working out comes a little bit later in the journey when the gym might start to feel repetitive or the novelty's worn off or when you notice that your strength has started to plateau a bit so your progress week on week becomes a lot more marginal. It takes longer to make more progress than it did at the beginning. Since September last year, I completely changed up my training and my training with my coach has been the most repetitive training I've ever done in my life. And the first couple of months, I found myself becoming really impatient. And there was a time where I absolutely wouldn't have done it. I would have maybe changed coach, maybe got a new program. But as a result of sticking out and being patient, I am the strongest I've ever been in my life as a result of repetitive training and patience. And I'm slowly seeing the benefit of that. And I think really in the last year, I've only just learned that lesson, even though I'm a couple of years into being a coach and I would coach someone exactly like this. Now, repetitive training in the gym doesn't feel sexy, which is why you might not see a lot of coaches posting their own training. And it's also why you see a lot of fitness influencers with loads of different workout plan options that are only like six to 12 weeks. If you take a look at my superhuman plan, it's a six month plan that's half a year, but there is a reason for that. As a result of the fitness industry, a lot of people will think that they need to hop between lots of different workout programs because they feel like they need to mix up their training to make progress and they always want to chase something new in the gym. But if you're a person like that, and you may have not managed to stick a full program out for its entirety, I used to do this all the time. This is literally why a lot of people don't see results in the gym, because they're hopping between programs or between coaches or classes all the time. Repetitive training really, really counts for a lot, and it's definitely not sexy but it can be made really fun and really stimulating when you know why everything in your programming is happening for a reason. And having a good coach or good workout programming can really be part of that. With Fuzz Culture Club and my one-to-one people, I focus so much on progressions with movement, especially with people that have never trained before. So if someone is wanting to eventually master a barbell back squat, but has never ever lifted a weight. The process of that would be starting with a bodyweight squat, then maybe moving to a goblet squat, a lower skill movement and adding a little bit of load, slowly building up the volume, the weight, mastering the form. Then once that person's ready, progressing that to an empty barbell squat, then slowly building up the weight, adding those plates onto the barbell, We might do variations where we do pause squats or box squats to build strength in different positions of that movement. And eventually that work will all accumulate and build a pretty sick looking squat. But that takes time and it takes patience. And the people who get the best results are the people who stick it out when it does become a little repetitive at times. And I think this is also why having a coach program for you can be so awesome. Because a good coach will show you how to focus on chasing those little progressive overload and small incremental gain each week. 
as opposed to just thinking about the eventual big picture and as opposed to just changing up your movements all the time just for the sake of it. I think my absolute favorite example and like lesson in patience is from the Karate Kid movies. So if you've not seen the Karate Kid, there is a character in those movies called Mr. Miyagi, who's a karate master. And he takes a kid called Daniel under his wing, who's been bullied at school, and he teaches him karate. At first, he has Daniel like waxing a car. You might have heard the wax on, wax off. And he has him painting a fence. And at first, Daniel gets really frustrated and annoyed that he isn't progressing quick enough and not actually doing any form of what he thinks is karate. And Mr. Miyagi keeps telling him to just trust the process and just wait. And eventually, when Daniel has done all of these random bits of stuff like painting fences and balancing on a bow and waxing a car, all of a sudden all those movement patterns fall into play and he starts being able to practice karate properly. And this is exactly the same as lifting weights. Although I would argue that as a coach, I would always tell you why you are doing everything that you're doing. Mr. Miyagi is a bit more stealth with that. He doesn't give a lot away. <laughs> we break movements down all the time in the gym. So I gave an example of a squat just then. Let's take a pull up. We might start to build strength just hanging from the bar in a dead hang position. And then we might build strength holding our chin over the bar. Then we might start to work on strength in the pull and the descent of the pull up. We might even then move on to accessory work to strengthen the biceps and the back, the muscles that we need for a pull up. Eventually, all that work will come together and you will have enough strength to do a full pull up. But as we all know, getting your first full pull up takes absolutely ages. You have to stick with it and be patient and chip away at all those progressions. And if you don't stick it out, it won't happen. You have to break it down into all those working parts like Mr. Miyagi does in The Karate Kid. So all of these examples that I've given today about patience in the gym with working out, with mastering movements, with making strength progress, this can relate back to every part of our journey, whether that's fitness and nutrition, whether that's our transitions, whether that's working on improving our food relationship because we've had disordered eating in the past, whether it's taking care of our mental well-being and doing the work, whether it's working on things like emotional regulation. We're never going to master all of these things overnight, in a month, or maybe for some of the big stuff, maybe we won't even master that in one year. We do have to chip away at a lot of these things patiently and trust the process. But that is really, really hard. So let's hold some space for that. We have to give ourselves the time and the space to grow into the people that we want to be. And that requires a hell of a lot of patience. So I want to leave you with a couple of journal prompts for today all relating back to patience. So the first prompt is, are there things in your life that you just wish would get here and happen for yourself sooner than they are right now? And if the answer to that is yes, the next question is, are you doing the reps for the things within your control? Have you broken up that big goal into the small steps, whether that's just showing up for therapy once a week, showing up to the gym a couple of days a week, journaling, showing up and practicing different elements of your sport that you want to get stronger at? All of these things are the things within your control. Are you doing the reps? And if the answer is yes, then you know you are doing everything you can but you might just be feeling a bit frustrated at times and that is valid and normal. You've just got to remind yourself to keep going and to be patient. If the answer is no, you're not doing everything you can within your control, then let's start to break that down further. What are the small steps that are within your control that you need to start paying a little bit more attention to? And if like me, you have felt really really impatient when it comes to working on your mental well-being or your physical well-being. It can be really hard, especially when you factor in larger things at play, 
like if you're on a waiting list to get support with your transition or you're waiting for an ADHD or an autism diagnosis or you have a chronic illness and it's taking you a while to get the support that you need. Having patience for things outside of that can be really, really hard. And the more we talk about it with each other, the more normalized it's going to be. If you are feeling a bit stuck right now, working on your own fitness or nutrition journey, and you would like a little bit help formulating a bulletproof Mr. Miyagi inspired plan to get you on the path to making some good progress instead of just hopping around between plans and classes and programs, I would absolutely love to help. So I've got a couple of days in my calendar next week where I'm doing a few no obligation chats for people that might want to talk about coaching. But if you prefer, you can actually just email me. I know loads of people don't enjoy being on the phone. I'm terrible at it outside of work. (laughs) Fill in the form in the show notes. Tell me a little bit about yourself and I'll get back to you usually in 24 hours and I'll let you know if I can help. I'll never ever take anyone on that doesn't fit the vibe that we have in Fuzz Culture Club. And the chances are that if you're listening to this podcast and it's resonated with you at any point, you will probably be the kind of person that would thrive in Fuzz Culture Club and you would probably be the type of person that I would love to coach. So hit that for and let's talk about it. And ending the podcast today, I just want us to hold space for the fact that we need to give ourselves the time and space to grow when it comes to our own self-development. We have to be patient and that is really hard and that is okay. Have an amazing rest of your week, cultivate family. Take it easy, you lot. I'll speak to you soon. I'm out.